Hello everybody. So I'm gonna start this video off talking about something that happened with my tank recently. I have a 90 gallon saltwater tank that I started setting up back in September. Uh, about mid-October I put in two uh, juvenile clownfish that had gone through a fully medicated quarantine system. And a couple days ago, I unfortunately lost one of those fish. I started the morning out normally. I turned the wave maker off so I could feed them. And I put, you know, a bit of mysis shrimp in, the frozen Hikari mysis. Put that in, walked away from the tank, not thinking anything of it. I do this every day, so who cares? Um, come back by the tank a few minutes later and I see one of my clownfish stuck to the overflow. And, you know, I immediately reach in, pull him off. Initially, when I touch him with my hand, he kind of swims away, I don't know, nine, 10 inches. I grab him out, um, still by hand. I didn't have to use a net or anything. And I put him in a separate container because my immediate thought was, you know, he choked on a piece of food without forcing or anything. You know, I, I was looking to see if I could see anything. I couldn't. Um, so I had him in a separate container with water from the tank and an air stone. Um, so I left him like that for, I don't know, about two hours. Um, and for the first 30 minutes or so, every once in a while, you know, he would kind of spasm, um, every few minutes. And then after that, you could tell he was dead, but you know, just on the offhand chance that, you know, he pulled through, I just left him for, you know, another hour or so. Um, my first response was to look online and see, you know, okay, can fish choke? Um, usually I know that fish have the ability to swallow very large food. Um, and it wasn't anything I'd heard of, but it still struck me as a possibility. And that was the only thing I could assume that had killed him, seeing as, you know, he, both the fish in the tank were healthy, fed the tank right after, you know, there's a death. So in my head, the only change was the food. Um, and so going through the forums online, there's multiple posts about this and all of them come to the consensus of no. And the reason being is it's, it's people's experiences and typically fish can't choke. And I, I understand that. Um, but the reefing forums, and I've seen them do this for other things. I've seen people comment on this. People assume that their experience is the truth and that, you know, rare events can't happen because they didn't happen to them. Um, and so... I didn't really accept the answer of no, because it was the only thing that struck me. There was no aggression in the tank. It's a 90 gallon tank, two clownfish, both of them get along. Um, tank parameters are fine. If anything, I'm having a issue with nitrate and phosphate are both zeroed out right now. Um, so I'm getting that up. So over the next two days, I spoke with a couple people from two of the local fish stores who I trust pretty well. And both of, well, all three of them um, said that while it's infrequent, it can happen. Um, one of them said she has seen it happen before, you know, albeit only a couple times in her career. And she's been doing things with fish for, I think she said somewhere over 17 years. So while that's rare, there always has to be, you know, that one instance that makes the statistic, you know, this just happened to be the one poor fish and I'm the one poor bastard that had the fish, you know, where he managed to choke. Now it is, you know, 
it is rare and it is you know a terrible thing but i don't believe that fish just die so that's kind of one of the reasons that i went into into everything and did the research was because i wanted to figure out you know okay if it wasn't that what was it you know i've checked the water parameters i've checked it's not aggression it's not territory it's not you know any of the common causes of fish death so you know i wanted to dig into it deeper unfortunately as you can see this is just the one little clown remaining um i have just picked up a couple of um other fish that are going to go into the tank so he will have a friend but unfortunately those two have to go through you know the quarantine system so he's going to be all alone with just a couple of urchins to keep him company for the uh, next month or so but i'll get once i get them in here you know i'll get him another clownfish buddy that hopefully he'll pair with um so he won't be in here too long hey everybody so i did a thing um i planned on getting a hippo tang was gonna go into quarantine and I got a hippo tank but I also bought a chocolate tank you can see on the left and hippos right there both of them seem happy enough with the drive so yeah let's get them upstairs All right, so got them inside. So let's see how they're doing. We'll get them floated. The bow tang seems to be doing fine. Sometimes they get a little annoyed when they're bagged up, but all in all, seems to be okay with it. Hold on, let's. This is the tricky part, so I'm going to put the camera down. And our chocolate tang also going in. And slide him in without screwing anything up too much. Give me enough space. All right, so both fish are in, and I'll leave them honestly probably about 45 minutes because it's a big bag um uh, maybe about 30 minutes and then i'll start dripping in some water to get him used to the water so all right so it's been about 40 minutes these two guys have been chilling in this water so i'm gonna get them out of here stand the bags back up in this foam cooler i've got and we'll Put a little bit of the water. I'm not really worried about it. Because um, they're going into a quarantine. There's not there's no medicine or anything in the system yet. Um, if anything, they'll like it more than the water they were in because they were in a quarantine system at the other place. So let's get those guys down there. We'll find a knife. All right, so these guys were double bagged, so we're just gonna do, we're not gonna drip, we're just gonna splash and make a mess. Hold on, get this one put in. It's hard to do while filming. All right. Dump some water in the bag. You stop playing dead. Is moving he just isn't happy add some water All right. <clears throat> oh. 
this in there. Give them a few more minutes. All right, both fish are in. Chocolate Tang is checking out the tank. Hippo, same thing. Neither of them seem to care about each other at the moment, which is really good. Yep, both of them are more concerned about the new situation, which I'm happy to see. Hippo might be a little rude, but nothing that seems to bother the other one at the moment. Come on. Go find your place. Don't make me separate you. <clears throat> I'm going to get an algae clip in there so they have something to snack on and hopefully can ignore each other. So what are you doing? Go to the closet. Ah, Dory. Oh my god, you just Dory. Right? Hey, this is your friend. <sighs> oh my god. Why are there three bags? Is there another one? To keep it from rolling. And uh, oh. as I was driving, they just put an extra bag to keep it from rolling in the cooler. They are so pretty. Oh, wow. And big compared to the clownfish, right? Yes. But both of those will get much larger. Oh. Oh, These are both so babies. Cute. And they eat the allergies that they stuff there? Mm hmm. Oh, that'll be great. Oh, it just pooped. Did you see? Mm -hmm. Coming out? Don't need to give the names. All right, so these guys have been in here for a little over 24 hours now. Uh, I've seen both of them eat, you know, not a lot, but both of them ate. I put an algae clip in yesterday. They picked on that. I put some pellet in today. They picked on that. I started introducing copper into the system. Um, so the copper is about 1.75 right now, uh, parts per million. I'm using copper power. Everything I've seen says that this is the most stable. Um, now, I'd be willing to bet that my copper is dropping because I did have an ammonia spike. So I put in a couple of these um, for biological filtration on top of the canister filter so I know those are extracting some of the copper out of the system the copper is not where I want it to be anyways yet I'm just getting a fish used to it so I don't mind if it drops down a little bit the fish are not actively showing disease so I'm not in a rush to get them up to you know therapeutic so I'm hoping with those in there and then I'm going to add a little bit of um, extra filtration into the canister filter so I can kind of maintain it. Um, once that happens, I can get the copper up to where it needs to be and they'll stay happily in here for the next, you know, couple weeks with no issue. But right now, they seem to be doing fine. Hippo Tang just appears to love wedging itself in between things. Um, slept down in that tube last night and all day today has been hugging this when it's not out swimming around hey everybody just wanted to say thank you for watching this video i hope to be posting you know as things are going on with the tank it's a new tank so i don't know how frequently i'll have updates 
but at least with the new fish in quarantine, it gives me something to make some content around. So if you like this video, hopefully hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you see new stuff coming up. And, you know, the goal is to have kind of an informative channel as I work through this process of setting up the 90 gallon. So, you know, we can learn things together. Those of you that know what you're doing and have been in the reefing industry a long time, you know, feel free to leave a comment down below if you see something in the video that doesn't match up with what you've seen, you know, and I can talk about it in the next video, you know, do my research on it and kind of see what we're going to help each other out. All right, have a great day, bye.